videos about product life cycles. You might have heard of product life cycles in terms of how long a product lasts effectively before it goes to disposal or it is recycled. In a previous video, I talked about the various stages within this type of product life cycle in terms of the environmental impact. So we talked about the acronym DRUM, where we've got disposal, raw materials, use and function of the product and manufacture, which all affect sort of environmental impacts and are all linked to product life cycle in that sense. Now, in the other sense of the word, we're talking about a product from the stage where it gets introduced into the market to the point where it becomes obsolete and presumably another product will take its place or it will be improved or, or moved on in that way. Now, the product life cycle in this sense can be divided into a range of different stages. And these are the product being introduced, where it comes into the market, the growth of the product, where it effectively the consumers start taking on the benefits of the product and the company starts gaining a steady stream of profit. At this point, you might obviously get a range of different companies trying to make me too products or products that are very similar or have similar functions or slightly different features. It will reach the point where it gets to maturity, where the sales then start to straighten out or level off. And this point is likely that there'll be a range of different products from various different companies on the market doing the same sort of thing. Eventually getting to the point where decline and the sales start to dwindle and it starts to become saturated. And at this point, certain companies start to think whether they continue to support this product or whether they move over to an, another product at this point. Now, in terms of the introduction of a product, I've talked about at this stage, there is a heavy marketing cost. And I talked about the marketing mix in a previous video where the marketeers will think about the product, the price, the promotion, the process, the, the various P's of, of all the marketing mix. However, there's a few reasons effectively why a product will be introduced and two approaches as to why a new product comes about, generally speaking in terms of technology, are the technology push and the market pull. With technology push, it simply means that a company has produced a product on the back of a new technology that's, that's come about. An example of this would be if we go back into the 80s and we look at the Sony Walkman. Now, this has turned out to be an incredibly successful product, and it's a precursor to the likes of MP3 players and the iPod and things like this. So, but effectively, at the time, it was not seen that there was going to be a consumer demand for this product. There was no consumer saying, I really need to have a portable tape player that I can walk around with and, and listen to. However, the technology was there due to miniaturization and new manufacturing technologies to make this product. And it was an effort by Sony to try and push this, push this technology, technology push onto the consumer. And as I say, in this sense, it turned out incredibly successful. Now, there's obviously examples of other technologies where this hasn't worked quite so well, where a new technology has come out and they've tried to think that there was an opening, but the consumers just haven't bought into the model. An example of this being the Sinclair C5, which was this one-person vehicle that was battery-powered, again, released around about the 80s, I believe. Okay, but it just didn't catch on. There was, there was too many problems, and it didn't meet the sort of consumer's need for the product at that time, and they didn't review it that well. Okay, so technology push can work, but at the same time, if it doesn't meet the consumer's needs, it's, it's likely to fail. Now, on the other side of this, we've got the market pull, sometimes called the demand pull or the customer pull. And it just means that the companies in this sense are listening to the consumer or looking at what the consumer might need within their uh, range of products and producing a product to meet their demands. An example of this, I would say quite recently, would be the introduction of better and better selfie cameras that are being added to the fronts of cell phones or mobile phones, where it was seen that the social activity of, of taking snapshots of oneself on on a phone or on a camera was very very popular so they started to push better and better cameras being placed on the face of cameras where in the past they were only placed on the rear on the back okay to take a photo in the normal sense but this is an example of where a social phenomenon effectively has driven product development in that sense another example of this would probably be iphone's recent iphone 5c i know we're Probably a bit old now, okay, for the, the 5C, but when it first came out, it was respecting the fact that perhaps younger consumers wanted a colourful phone to sort of express their personalities in this sense. And I suppose in a sense, this is also linked to the influences of fashion and trends within society as, as it goes forwards. 
Now, another term you should be familiar with when it comes to product life cycle is obsolescence or planned obsolescence. So obsolescence obviously is when something just becomes obsolete or it becomes old hat or it wears out and, and needs to be discarded in that sense. Planned obsolescence, however, is planning for the fact that this will happen and perhaps in some extent at a slightly accelerated rate due to technological advancements or the fact that you know there might be changes in the way things things happen to develop products on and it's a way for companies effectively to ensure a steady stream of revenue now this term first came around around about the time of the american depression around the 1930s whereby there were for the first time a surplus of consumer goods so prior to sort of industrialization and things like this, where products were constantly running out, was constantly running out of goods, post-industrialization, we was at this point where actually we had a surplus almost of goods. And it was the first time where the consumer could go out and actually buy things. But in order to get the economy boosted and to, to ensure that consumers kept buying products, this idea of planned obsolescence and encouraging consumers to buy products over a set period of time when a new one come out, okay, could be termed the first time that planned obsolescence were being into place. Now, if we go on to the example of Apple as a company and their, their various iterations of the iPhone that we've seen over the last few years, they seem to have around about an 18 month or maybe even less life cycle whereby they introduce a new phone, it reaches growth and maturity, and then it declines, perhaps while the phone is still in place. Okay, Now, obviously, we can make upgrades to the software and things like this, but this is not going to allow Apple to have this steady stream of income coming in through constantly buying their products effectively. So they add features within the phone to allow this idea of planned obsolescence to happen. So, for example, if we purchase a phone that has a non-removable battery, after a certain period of time, that battery will eventually become less and less efficient. The charge it holds will not be as heavy as it was the first time we opened it from the box. So after a period of time, it will decline, it will become obsolete. But that is planned in. The, the company know this is going to happen and therefore they don't offer a replaceable battery. Other examples of this is when a company, for example, changes its uh, operating system and at some point eventually says, OK, we're not supporting the old operating system anymore. We're not giving updates to this. Now, for an example of this, we could look at Microsoft's Windows XP operating system, whereby they basically said to their users they was no longer supporting the updates in terms of protection. So if you were still running on an older system running Windows XP, you wouldn't get an update to your sort of security measures and things like this. And therefore, it'd be a very strong reason for a user or even a business to upgrade to a later version of Windows, such as Windows 7 or 10 or the various iterations of that. And finally, one other reason, I suppose, with the, the increase in technology is the demand for companies like Apple or Microsoft, for example, to be a lot less careful with the way they code. So if we go back way back in time to when the first computers were come out, memory and processing power was at an absolute premium. So software coders had to be very, very careful about how they coded their software. Nowadays, if we go on the basis of Moore's law, whereby computing power doubles every sort of 18 months or year and a half or there or thereabouts, it means if we know the technology is going to increase as a software developer, we don't maybe have to be so frugal with the way that we design our software, knowing that the fact that the newer version of the hardware will be able to support that. And again, you could say that this kind of ties in with this idea of planned obsolescence as well. If I'm Apple and I'm producing apps for my latest phone, I don't necessarily need to worry too much about older phones if I know that the latest iPhone 7, 8, 9, wherever we are in the future, is going to have that more powerful processor, is going to have more RAM, and so on and so forth to allow me to play these things. And again, all of these things in terms of planned obsolescence and the way that products are marketed are linked to mainly two areas, so technology push and the market pull. But the goal being, I suppose, with most companies to combine these two factors together in a coupling model whereby we are looking at pushing new technologies, but also thinking about the interest of the consumer as well to balance this and ensure that we get a steady stream of sales through the introduction of the product all the way through to its eventual decline.